educating investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 21st, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. More important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial in at 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, you got a bit of a mixed bag out here. That mix is coming from the Russell and the Trannies. They're off four points and 77 points, respectively. The Dow's up 22 points, less than one tenth of a percent. S&P is six tenths or 24. NASDAQ 100, a little over one percent at 141 points. The upside semis are up one percent at 29 points. You've got gold trading out at 17.11.20. That's up 11 bucks. Silver is up two cents at 18.69. Lights Recruit is up 279.9709 is a print there. Natural gas up four cents in the 30 year treasury. Printing out 139.23. That's one point and seven ticks to the upside. Leading the charge dollar wise, you've got Tesla up 70 bucks, nearly 10%. BioRad Laboratories up 7.5% or 37 bucks. Thermo Fisher Scientific, 33 bucks or 6%. Replogen. No idea what it is. Doesn't matter. It's up 13 percent, 22 bucks to the upside. To the downside, it is AutoZone. It's in the red zone, off nearly 3 percent, 62 dollars. Pools off 36 bucks or 9 percent. Chipotle's down 18, a little over 1 percent. Lithium Motors down 4 percent. That's 12 bucks to the downside. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. No requests so far. I take that. There's one request here, which is if I could pull apart the ES Mini and show different retracement levels and see if I could find confluence. Now that came in earlier this earlier this morning and i apologize it was a woman's name uh, i don't recall so we'll, we'll do that but first let's go to simply go take a look at uh let's go take a look at the multi time frame charts out here for the es mini so let's start there first then we'll switch back and forth and take a look at those uh, retracement levels uh, for you so here we take a look at the ES mini. As long as price closed above 39.50, 39.50 was the high of this evening star candle formation back in the uh, late part of uh, June, June 24th through June 28th. So that set up a natural level of resistance. If price closes above the 39.50 or 39.87, then that's going to suggest that we've got this A to B equal C to the upside. Now what's drawn here is just the one to one level. One to one is around 40.22. When we go take a look at the ES mini chart, I'll put the exact A to B equal C to pattern in there and then you'll have the exact numbers out here now just because it's approaching that level that does not mean that's where price is going to stop that's just the one-to-one -one price projection if we look at a five-hour time frame chart out here and we look for some kind of topping signal first you've got price that is above its oscillator and change line so that in this green so that's a positive it's taken out its uh, td9 count breakdown resistance level 39.50 that's a positive it's headed to 40.36 that's the next td9 count breakdown resistance area that's where its next battle is let me refresh these charts here we do have wave number seven. Let me just see how well it's going to wait till we, yeah, more like really wave number five than we have wave number seven out here. So we're going with no topping signal. 
is present at this stage for the uh, a five hour time frame chart. And it would have, in essence, the same A to B equals CD pattern we just looked at on the daily time frame. The four hour time frame chart, no topping pattern. It does have a Rhodes Mintum indicator signal. It would need a bearish reversal candle to confirm that. It's already taken out a bearish reversal candle that confirmed at six o'clock this morning. But price never closed below its green oscillator and change line. So its signal was always neutral to us because that green oscillator and change line, strong momentum indicator. As long as price remains above it, it's really quite frankly bullish. If we look at the two hour time frame chart out here. This did have a wave number seven top. It had a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And any close on a two hour basis, that next two hour would be, I think it was 10 to 12, two. It should be two o'clock out there. And that would be a close above 39.77 and a quarter. Puts it in a strong bullish camp out here. No topping signal on the 60 minute, nor the 30, nor the 15. Although, yeah, nor the 15, nor the. Uh, or the 10-minute chart out here. So we're not seeing a whole lot of tops inside the uh, S&P 500 or the ES Mini, so it should continue to move higher. Let's go take a look at that uh, request to take a look at retracement levels. We'll throw in the A to B equals CD pattern so that uh, you don't have to use my approximation. And so we'll get over to that. Uh, it's going to be the black background chart. So let's go right here. I did I did do some work on this earlier uh, this morning. So let me... Uh, let me just open up my chart here. So the very so from a retracement standpoint, the first retracement that I'm going to, I think it was Laura, the first retracement that I'm going to draw is from the uh, from, really from its all time high. This is the ES mini that we're taking a look at. This is the September contract, and that high formed on January the fourth. So we're going to go from that high down to the low. The actual low took place on June the seventeenth. So we'll put that eight. Uh, we'll put that Fibonacci retracement series in here, and that's from the high of 47.92 down to the low of 36.39. So what you'll first see here is that you've got the 38, the 0.382 retracement is up at the 40.79 level. Now let me just throw in the A to B equals C D pattern. We can always erase each of these, uh, even though you didn't ask for that because I was using an estimation here. And let me give you the exact A to B equals C D pattern. So the A point is going to be that low from June 17th. The high took place out here on June the 28th, and then the lower, the C, the C leg, the, the C to D leg, or the B to C leg, ended at the low on July the 14th. So our one-to-one -one price projection would get us up to 40.34. Once price gets up to 40.34, if we see some type of bearish reversal candle, that would give us what we would call our sell the D point pattern, or in this case here, it would be a Gartley sell pattern. That does not mean that price is going to stop at 40.34. That does not mean the price is going to stop at 40.79. These are just simply guidelines. And once we get above the one-to-one -one area, or close to the one-to-one -one area, then that's when you really start looking for that bearish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. So let's leave the uh, A to B equals CD pattern out there and draw the second set of Fibonacci numbers that you could draw. In fact, I'll turn off the first one. We'll put in the second one. The second one would be from the next swing point high. The next swing point high that I would be using would be the high that comes in on March 29th. It's really the only high that anybody could use out there. Why? Because the highs that were out here in the uh, Feb February time frame, those were taken out with this high here. Again, I think it was lower from March the 29th. And again, if we go from that high down to the low, the low of that 36.39, you'll see that the 0 0.382 retracement is in the 40.17 area out here. If I put on the first set, you'll see that we had 40.79. So from a dead cat bounce standpoint, that would be your range out here. Now there's another set of Fibonacci numbers that we can put out here. That would be the last swing high. That last swing high would be from the trading day of May the 31st, down to again that low. We use the same low. And you can see right now we're at the 0.618 area. That 0.618 area measures 39.88. We're gonna go to a hard break. When we come back from this, we'll put all this together. We'll try to find an area of confluence where we've got two Fibonacci retracement numbers that align with each other. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, folks. So we've got the ES Mini uh, daily time frame chart up on our screen. We're taking a look at different Fibonacci levels, the A to B equals CD pattern that is uh, present at the uh, moment. We've got the uh, smallest uh, retracement area of its last set of swing points out there. And again, that's from the high that formed out here on the trading day of May 31st down to the low that uh, took place on June the uh, 17th. We can see the price is up at the 0.618 retracement area, 39.88. Remember, we looked at the ES Mini charts. We looked at the multi time frames, and we didn't have any kind of uh, topping signals out there. Now, these retracement areas when price hits these levels they're kind of like an elevator and so it's where you can see a turnaround and go down to the next you know back down to the bottom or just where people get off there's a bit of a time period a little bit of a delay and then price moves forward hasn't completed the one to one a to b equals cd pattern just getting above the 3950 level if it stays above that i don't see this as a place to sell the uh, ES Mini. Now, intraday, a whole different uh, subject out there, but we're not going to take a look at intraday charts to figure that out. So here are the uh, retracement. I'm going to turn off the A to B equals CD pattern right now. I'm just going to turn that off. Put up the uh, Fibonacci levels that we're looking. We're just looking where do a couple of things come together. Well, we can see here we're looking for a potential, a potential confluence zone. One could be from the uh, swing point out here from March 29th down to that low because a 3.382 retracement is a 40.17 and that's really close to that 0.618 retracement level. And that also happens to be about where the A to B equals CD pattern would take us, which is a 40.34. So that would be an area where you could look for a potential uh, top short-term top to uh, form. But of course, because you've got the A to B equals CD pattern, what you'd be looking for to confirm that would be some type of bearish reversal candle. If we take a look at, let me turn off the A to B equals CD, put on that uh, bit larger set of, uh, of retracement levels out here. The other area, so let's turn off the uh, yellow one, which one is the yellow one? I think it's this one. There we go. The other area, another possibility, we've got the 0.382 retracement of the whole move. The whole move down from its all-time high to the low on uh, June the uh, 17th out there. And then the retracement from this uh, May 31st level. You do have a convergence at the 4079 area out there. So those would be the retracement levels. Uh, I believe, again, it was Laura. I hope that helps you out with regard to the way that you should be taking a look at the retracements out there. So thanks for the request and have a, a great day. We've got some other questions that have come in, so let's go ahead and knock those out. 
Oh, we've got a caller. So give me a moment here. Uh, give me a moment. Let me see. Uh, who do we have out here? Well, um, uh, we've got Brent. Hey, Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Sorry about that. How are you today? Oh, no problem, Steve. Thank you for taking the call. How are you? Sure. I'm doing I'm doing well. Thank you. For, thank you for asking. So it's Goldilocks that you'd like to uh, take a look at, which is good because uh, John inside our Tiger's Den wanted to take a look at gold as well. So that's a nice little uh, segue into it. So uh, tell the folks uh, what uh, what you're doing and how I can best help you. Well, my specific question is that it's been my experience, whether it's at a high, you have the market up positive, say, in the morning, then it goes negative. Uh, or in this case where gold was down last night and then it's turned positive, that that can be a turning point. That's one of the more powerful you know, times that can happen. So I was just wondering if there's anything in your work that shows that potential. The answer to your question is yes. You are quite an intuitive chap, I have to tell you. So let's go take a look at uh, why Stevie answers Brett's question yes. And that's this chart right here. And that is where we're taking a look at gold priced in all of the major currencies, priced in euros, dollars, yen, and pounds. And so if we take a look at just the candle formation in each of those. First of all, in order for gold to have any kind of sustained rally, gold must be rising in all the major currencies. If it's rising in dollars, falling in euros, then you're neutral because you have on one side buyers and on another side sellers. What you want is the side of buyers across the board. So, Brent, today... Um, number one, yesterday, what's not going to show up on these black charts out here is the TD9 count pattern. But yesterday was a TD9 count bottom. And as long as price holds yesterday's low, which it has, that's a bottoming pattern. If we take a look at the larger A to B equals CD pattern that is out here, price made its way down to the 1.618 level. If we owned the art of timing the trade, I can't know, I don't remember which page it's on, but it would tell you once you do a 1 to 1.618, you typically do something else. Well, here you've got a, you're going to have right now, it's a bullish engulfing candle. If gold even sells off, as long as it closes one tick to the upside, you would have a uh, key reversal candle would confirm this by the D point pattern. What we like about this set of charts here is that we have bottoming patterns for all of the major currencies. And that's why I answer your question, yeah, this really could be a turning point. Because if we take a look at gold priced in euros and we look at its A to B equals CD, this is the first completion of that with today's bullish engulfing candle. It's a big wide one out there. If we take a look at gold priced in yen, what gold priced in yen did was it got back to its swing point for May 16th. It has now tested and rejected that level. And as long as price closes above $235,066.90 out there, that's how many yen you would need to buy one ounce of gold. Uh, as long as it closes above that, then we've got a rejection of that swing point. And then finally, gold priced in Great British Pounds made its way back to the $1,399 level. It is a bullish reversal candle. So we have gold priced in all the major currencies with bottoming patterns out there. And that's why I say that, yeah, this is very likely a uh, turning point out there. Does that make sense? That's great stuff, Steve. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, so I don't know what else to just, you know, I, I mean, we could go take a look at the intraday charts for you. Um, and I'm happy to do that. And, and I probably need to just, well, I, let me just do that anyways while, you, while you're on the phone. Because there was a request that said, what's the upside potential for gold out here? Of course, it's unlimited. But if we go take a look at where the natural levels of resistance are, let's try to pull up these uh, white background charts and, and look at those. So what I'm going to do here is look at the daily time frame chart. And so I had mentioned, uh, uh, as we first started taking a look at gold, that yesterday was a TD9 count bottoming pattern out here. And what that does then, folks, is that sets up the first level of resistance, which is at 1751. Turns out that gold also has a profile resistance at 1746. So the answer to John's question inside the Tiger's Den is that what's the upside for gold? Well, it's, I'm not saying that's where it's limited. I'm telling you that's where the next real battle should be especially if gold can close above its red oscillator and change line. If price can overtake that level, then Brent and John, price would uh, target the 1848 area. If that level were to fail, then we're looking at 1991. Now, when I shorten this chart back up here, we look to the weekly time frame chart. What we have on a weekly time frame chart is price getting back to an area of support that held in the past. That was its TD9 count breakout area, and that was at 1701.40. It just sort of adds, I don't have a bottoming pattern here, but it was a hammer candle that formed on August, the week of August 13th. That has held, it's been tested and rejected. So another thing to add, Brent, I think, to the idea that this could be a significant bottom for uh, Goldilocks. 
Uh, with regard to upside potential there, what we'd be targeting is the oscillator and change line, which is currently printed at 181090. Folks, don't use that as the exact number. That's going to change as price moves up and down out there. So that kind of, I think that answers most of the uh, questions out here. Or is there any other question that you might have? No, that does very much, so, Steve. My only other observation is we must be getting to where we're going to roll over to the new contract because there's some, uh, you know, discrepancy between, you know, the one contract has it around. I know, at least, you know, as far as where it went down to was like down to like 1680, I think, and then others had it down to, you know, maybe just below 1700. So there was a there was a difference between the two contracts. Sure, so there is. Wondering which, which one are you using? I'm using August. Um, uh, August, for example, has got volume of about 175,000 contracts. December right now, about 48,000. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be rolling over, but right now all this data came from using the August contract. All righty, Brett? All right, thank you so much. You have a great day. Have a great weekend. You too. That was Brett DeMartinez, California. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So two more things on uh, Goldilocks before we move off to uh, something else out here. The 30-minute time frame chart formed a, a nice uh, TD9 count uh, top. It did that at 11.30 this morning. And uh, what that suggests is watch that high. That's 17.17.70. Price takes that out. Tells you about a nice strong momentum to move to the upside. That gold should continue its advance out here. The last question with regard to gold was what is gold doing priced in Chinese yuan? So we're going to go ahead and uh, move over to that screen. Uh, this screen here we're taking a look at. This is for John as well. Different John. Uh, this is the top portion of the screen that you're looking at. As far as bottoming patterns out here, I don't have this in candle formation or, or anything along those lines. But what I do see out here is a rising trend line. 
that price is pulled back to. So I'd say that gold priced in one is also uh, giving us a, a bottoming signal. So that's gold in dollars, euros, yen, pounds out there, and the uh, yuan. So uh, that's what we've got out there for uh, Goldilocks. I do hope that uh, helps you out. Uh, let's go to our next request. Our next request is from uh, Peter inside the Tiger's Den. And Peter wanted to take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, the advanced decline oscillator. And yes, Peter, it is absolutely in the oversold. To oh, I, you know what? One last thing with regard to gold. One, one last area out here. Um, I like to be thorough. Well, you, you, you folks already know that. And that would be the last area, the last bastion that gold really needs to cross above and close above is 1724. So here, that happens to be the uh, perigee uh, pivot point out here uh, from June, July the uh, 13th. 14th. When you say, yeah, so that's still that's still an effect out here. So 17, a close above 1724.90 would really be the feather in the cap to just confirm everything else that we took a look at inside of uh, inside of uh, Goldilocks. So now let's go take a look at New York Stock Exchange, the advanced client oscillator out here, and we get over to it. Where is it? Here we go. Uh, it is absolutely in the, uh, it's made it to the plus 150, above plus 150. The actual closing uh, yesterday was uh, one. 194.61. Now, what the advanced decline oscillator is, folks, it is the uh, it's the difference between the 39 and 19 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line out there. And uh, when it closes above the plus 150 level, a couple of things happen. One, it tells you that you're in an overbought condition, and so to see some type of uh, pullback or retracement could also be a top. But when you get a top, you'd like to see some other type of topping signal out there, a pattern that has uh, formed. So it is in the overbought area out there. Now it can stay in this overbought area for quite a period of time. Oftentimes the way that uh, because it did, because we didn't see a failure at the 150 level out there, chances are what will form out here for the next short term top is like many of them in the past. You'll see these green lines where price is moving higher. The advanced decline oscillator starts moving lower out there. So we don't have that signal just yet, Peter, but that's something that I would be observant of and be watching. That doesn't mean that has to form. It just means that uh, I think there's a likely outcome that that will uh, form out here. But uh, it, to answer your question, yes, it is absolutely in the uh, oversold uh, territory. Um, so I do hope that uh, I do hope that helps answer your question out there. MKC inside the Tigers and wanted to take a look at the Qs. So to go take a look at the Qs, let's do this here. Let's go to our index ETF charts out here. Let's go ahead and open up the uh, Qs chart so we can just take a look at it. And so with regard to the Qs, and I will share with you, um, you know, I'm going to give you some some figures and some values out here. But uh, which is that uh, the Qs are approaching a uh, level an area of resistance. The level of resistance where both, in this case here, in the QQQ chart, is where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside the range. The range out here, MKC, is between 289.12, that's the bottom of the profile, and 351.49, the top of the profile. So this is where buyers and sellers believe this is fairly valued. Not unusual to see price stop here as well. Uh, but that doesn't mean you go ahead and sell this level out here. And in fact, I would really be deferring to the daily time frame chart. Happened to be, I think we looked at the daily time frame chart earlier. Well, we we looked at it, but let's just let's just add, you know, let's just confirm this here. On the NQ chart, price is also sitting at the uh, center of its uh, profile out here. It's not really slightly above it, and and I'm just going to share with you if you trade the Qs, please do yourself the favor, get access to the NQ, get access to the NQ, and and learn many of these patterns. Uh, they're not that hard to learn. I teach you how to do that. There's uh, hours, eight, nine hours of archive workshops. Plus, you have access to me if you're a subscriber. And in many of you are listening, you're not subscribers out there, and you've got access to me certainly during the uh, Trader's Ed show out here. So, uh, but use that. That's going to provide you with better signals and patterns than trying to make your decisions off of the ETFs. And the reason I say that is from personal experience. Because I can tell you when I first began trading, I didn't get access to the equity futures contract. Now, I didn't even know what futures were, so to speak, out there. And the patterns that were associated. But that was at the beginning of my uh, career. And so I was just taking a look at swing points and tests on volume and so forth. You're going to do yourself much more justice. And I'm not saying you trade the futures. You don't have to trade the futures. But you want to really be able to get access to that so that you can um, really understand what's going on. But back to the cues here. You've got the uh, B point that was still. I don't have the volume on this. Let me see if I can add that real quickly here. So give me a moment. 
I know I can. The question is just how easy is it? And it's pretty easy. It's just I've got to go search for it. So where is it? It's going to be up in the built-in studies. Get down to the Vs. There's only one V. And um, I can turn the volume on. So uh, volume. There we go. So now we should have the volume. There we go. So now we take a look at volume. The uh, B point out here, that was a trading day of June 27th. That had volume of 563,000 shares, and that was passed with uh, 553,000. That was two days ago. Yesterday was 585. So you do have a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern. The upside, that B point taken out with volume. You can see we're at the one-to-one -one price projection level. Uh, that's at this uh, 12,544 area. Uh, next price target should be in the 12,869 range. What you're watching for inside the queues is uh, a, a bearish reversal candle. That would then confirm a sell the D point pattern. So I hope that helps you out with regard to the queues out there. Again, my preference, as you know, is to take our decision, make our decisions off of the NQ chart. Um, I like to supplement that in taking a look at what's going on in the ETFs, but I don't like to make the decisions just based upon what the ETFs have done out there. So that takes care of all the requests at this moment in time. Let me just make sure I heard a little ping in my ear. Nope, okay, that was not a, a caller. And uh, let me just see if there's anything that's coming by email. And the answer is, man, there is not. So it's a quiet day compared to yesterday out there, 1.37 in the afternoon. What do we want to go take a look at next? Let's go back and take a look at these charts out here, and we will figure that out. Um, we will I'll figure that out. Give me a moment here. Yeah, strong like bull. Uh, overbought, area Steve lots of less. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, let's do this. What do we want to go look at next? Well, let's go take a look at natural gas. So let's pull up the uh, natural gas charts out here. And let me go to the longer term time frame. So natural gas charts. It'll take a moment just for this. The reason is because, uh, well, first of all, a lot of people trade natural gas. So they trade maybe the UNG based upon that. But again, if you trade the UNG, actually, you need to know what futures contracts are inside that thing. And I don't know if you trade the UNG that it's the uh, September contract. Right now, maybe it's partial August, partial September out there. What I'm showing you is the uh, September contract for natural gas. Now, the reason I'm showing this to you is, uh, oh, I put up the NQ. Oh, man, Steve-O. See, NG, NQ, it's Stevie's eyes, you know, that are a suspect in this deal here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to pull up those natural gas charts. The reason that we're pulling them up is because they did provide a TD9 count top yesterday. That does not mean that this is going to top. It's going to be dependent upon the close. Our price earlier in the morning was pushing above that level. When we come back to this break, I'll have the natural gas charts out there. They're up on the screen right now. You can see the TD9 count. The price does close above yesterday's high. That's at 7.925 out there. You're going to have a strong momentum move to the upside message with $9.13 being the price start. See Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. TFNN has been your trusted source of analysis for bonds, metals, stocks, commodities, and options for years. And we are happy to announce that we are bringing that same caliber of analysis for the Forex market. Teddy Kekstad has 30 plus years of experience in Forex trading, commodity risk management, Forex hedging, volatility, and so much more. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with elite coverage of all major currency pairs, including the DXY, Euro Dollar, Pound Dollar, Aussie Dollar dollar yen, dollar Swiss franc, and so much more. Teddy will recommend specific trades when the market presents them and provide updates throughout the week when warranted. For the month of July, inaugural members to the Tiger Forex Report will receive 25% off the monthly subscription for as long as they're subscribed. Just use promo code TEDDY25 to lock in the added savings. This offer is good only for the month of July, so do not miss your opportunity to save on the Tiger Forex Report. TFNN, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks, and back to the natural gas charts. Give me a moment. We'll pull those up here just to finish that off. Uh, so here we've got, so we're talking about the daily time frame, that TD9 count. Now, what I want you to notice is that, uh, one, price above the weekly green oscillator and change line, as long as it closes above that level, that suggests it wants to seek out higher price, even though we got that nice uh, Rosemont indicator top here in natural gas on the monthly time frame. What price did was it pulled right back to that green oscillator and change line. So the monthly is bullish. Um, it's neutral, I guess, really. It's neutral. The weekly's neutral. You've got a topping signal on the daily time frame. So when we take a look at the 30-minute time frame, what we don't have out here is any kind of breaks of key support levels. We don't have it for the 30. We don't have it for any of these larger time frames as well. So this uh, TD9 count pattern is suspect, just suspect because of the strength everywhere else, just simply the fact that we don't have any kind of, uh, any kind of levels of support failing out here so what i would do if i was in a long trade in natural gas i would just tighten up the stop um and if you do get a, a, a retracement or a pullback not to be unexpected it's just right now at 143 in the afternoon even though we've got that topping pattern boy the short-term time frame charts are not confirming a whole heck of a lot let's go to our next question out here that next question was go take a look at uh, steel dynamics let me get this closed down here because it takes up my resources and we'll switch over to the steel dynamics chart and uh, momentarily, we get over to that. Give me a moment. There's your ES Mini. Let's get back here. STLD, by the way, if I didn't give you that, is the ticker symbol, in case you're following along at home. And uh, so on a monthly basis, what do we have out here? Right now, I've just got a consolidation with inside its monthly profile that runs anywhere from 55.52. That's the bottom. It's bullish in structure. So price is sitting at support at the 65.49 area. It's above that right now. But that would be your support. Your support zone is 55.52 to 65.49 on a monthly time frame. And resistance is at 90.40. If you look at the weekly chart out here, you, well, this top with the TD9 count pattern, the price pulled all the way back to support, which is the uh, bottom of its profile, 62.11. Since that held, price should go target 75.47, the weekly oscillator and change line. If price can close above that level, then its sell zone is a bearish structured profile on a weekly basis between the 83.56 and 86.63. Now we start getting down to noisier charts, right? You got smoother charts on monthly and weekly. You start getting you know, the daily and others. You start getting to your noisy charts. With regard to the daily time frame out here, I just have to open this up to see if there was an A to B equals CD to the downside of the form. Yes, there was. So we can see the A to B equals CD pattern. We see the bullish hammer candle. We see wave number seven. So it does have two different bottoms and price today is trading above resistance. In this case here, this is a bearish structured profile. That is between the range of 67.35 to 68.17. Now the volume that you've got today is 1.6 million shares. And it's really going against its uh, gap to the uh, downside. That did volume of about 2.6 million. So you're 1.6. So you've got pretty decent volume as it's coming into. What I'm looking at here, folks, is this little gap right here from the trading day when this gapped uh, after the close on June 21st out there. So what you'd like to see here 
is two consecutive closes above the top of the bear structure profile, 68.17. What that, what, what that would then say to you, whoever the you is, is that on any retracement, you'd look for support at 67.35. So let's say you want to get into this and you're not into, the, into this, or if you are into this and you wanted to add to the position, that would be a place that I would look at, would be at the 67.35 level out here. I don't really see a whole heck of a lot else uh, for us to uh, spend time on. So I hope that helps you out with regard to what uh, Steel Dynamics is doing out there. Let me see, we might have a question that has come in. Um, no, that was just a, I guess that was just a comment. Uh, I think that was a comment. Yeah, that was just a comment out there. And, uh, uh, do, 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 do. okay, so what do we want to go take a look at next? Uh, let's go see what's going on inside the markets. Let's do that. So let's go over here to our main uh, screen. And I think I'm still on the white screens. I am. I'm going to switch over to the, just, uh, just to where we can take a look at daily, weekly, and monthly uh, scenarios out here. And I would be this screen. I need to actually change over to it. Give me a moment, daily, weekly, month. Okay, so let's take a look at some instruments that are moving. Tesla. So let's take a look at instruments moving to the upside, instruments moving to the downside. TSLA, get a feel for where they are headed to, what kind of patterns they might have. So momentarily here, we'll have the daily, weekly, and monthly time frames for Tesla. Tesla, by the way, is up uh, $69, up 9.5%. And uh, it's looking very positive on the daily time frame. It's above prior swing points. On a weekly time frame, uh, it is above its oscillator and change line. Support holding on the uh, monthly time frame out here. Okay, so where is Tesla headed to? So the next level of resistance for Tesla would be 90356. We're trading at A12 right now. Where that comes from, that would be the top of its weekly profile. If Tesla could take out 90356, then you'd be looking for a move to 1092. But first price would then find resistance on the monthly time frame chart, which is the oscillator and change line, which right now is printed about 949. So on a daily basis, I'm uh, just curious what's Tesla got going on from a volume standpoint. TSLA, I'm going to look at this on a different screen out there, see what we've got. Oh, you've got big volume, 37 million shares today. So this has got big volume out here. Um, yeah, it's got big volume. It's taken out a swing point on a daily basis at 31 million. You're already at 36. So Tesla definitely is signaling to you and I that it wants to cruise higher, and I'd say that 90356 becomes its likely destination. The next chart that we want to take a look at is uh, what else is moving to the upside of significance? BioRad, BIO is the uh, ticker symbol. That's trading up uh, 36 bucks, that's 7% to the upside. Let's go take a look at it. Uh, this will be up momentarily. So you're saying, did I miss ISRG? Did you ask me about ISRG, Dan? If you did, uh, even if you did, we'll go ahead and do that. So we got BioRat taking out a, a B point out here. Let me get back to that other uh, chart. Just check out the uh, volume. So this would be an A to B equals CD to the upside if it's taking that out with volume. Well, even if it's not, it could be. But the volume that is taken out is a swing point from July 11th that had 241,000 shares. You're at 120. So, uh, you know, it's pretty close to taking that level out. Um, the next level of resistance then, since it's uh, kind of neutral with regard to whether it is or it isn't, would really be back by its prior swing points. And here, I would just shift to 543.75, the top of that uh, weekly profile out there. So that's what's going on with, uh, I, uh, with Bio Labs. ISRG, I think that might be a question. If it's not a question, okay. Uh, well, we're going to look at it anyways. And, uh, oh, two, two earnings tonight. I, which one looks better? Okay, perfect. ISRG. Sorry that I overlooked that, Dan. Uh, thanks for writing that uh, back in there. So we take a look at ISRG. That happens to be intuitive surgical. Brain salad surgery out here. Price is, uh, you got an A to B equals CD pattern for sure. So the A to B equals CD pattern, uh, the A point is down at the uh, low from June 16th. The B point out here, is it the high from 628 high was 211.47. And the next high is uh, 211.20. So it's going to be the high for the trading day of uh, June 28th. And then the, uh, B point, the C point is going to be the low from July 13th. So you're already at the one-to-one -one price projection level. I know you can't see it on, on the screen that you're looking at. That's okay. I'm just giving you the levels. The next area, the next target, the one to one point two seven two would be 227. Above that would be 235. So knowing that 227 is the next price target, we take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here, which has a nice TD9 count bottom. Price is going to target that 227 level. 
Now that's a bullish structured profile. That is where a counter trend rally would end if that's all that is going on in intuitive surgical. If intuitive surgical flows above 227.07, tells you to want to move to 257.79, and above that, 308 even. Steven, right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at the Seagate Technologies. Uh, this is for Dan and the Tiger's Den. His question really was, which of the two do I like uh, better? Is it uh, the instrument that we just took a look at or is it uh, Seagate Technologies? And that was Intuitive Surgical. My answer here, that both have A to B equals CD patterns that are underway. And any bearish reversal candle is going to identify a sell the D point pattern. But the answer to your question, Dan, on a daily basis, I definitely like Seagate Technologies better. And the reason is, is because this informed a TD9 count top on the trading day of July 19th. It didn't even hesitate. This tells us about a very strong momentum move to the upside because yesterday price closed right above it, so it negated that pattern. Today, price is trading above its TD9 breakdown level of 83.20. That suggests that price wants to go target its most recent swing point. That's at the 88.25-ish uh, area out there. However, before price gets there, 86.18 is going to be resistance. So just like um, 
uh, what was we were looking at two of surgical has got resistance at you know an A to B equal CD pattern resistance not that much higher above on the weekly time frame you know they're both kind of in that same condition now if price can close above this is an earnings play I think you're looking at if price can close above 86 16 that's going to signal a move back to $108 but of course that 88 ish area would really be the first target so that's what I like I would choose uh, Seagate if you have to uh, and plus I live in Seagate I I'm a member at Seagate Beach Club in uh, uh, so I like a lot of things that are Seagate. Uh, here's a Seagate logo on my uh, shirt out here. Uh, we did have a request to go take a look at Etsy. We go take a look at uh, Etsy out here. This is for Pledge to the Side, the Tiger's Den. So Etsy on a uh, weekly, on a monthly, but weekly basis has a TD9 count bottom. On a daily basis has a Rhodes Mint indicator bottom. Prices just got an A to B equals CD to the upside pattern. Prices trade above the top of its daily profile today. Yet closed above it yesterday. Another close today above 91.58. This looks uh, very promising as well. Where should price target? I'd say the next level of resistance for you in Etsy is at 106.24. You're 94, 95.03 right now. That's the top of that weekly profile. Folks, stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear. He happens to be my favorite polar bear as well. He's up next. Tom O'Brien will bring us on. Home. I'll be back with you at 1 o'clock sharp. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. See you tomorrow.